I'm going to be talking to you today a little bit about how do you start a journey in looking at the future of technology. Um, and the place I'm going to start is with technology itself. Now, technology is just an enabler. It allows you to do things you want to do. And it also allows you to do the things you can do. And the most important thing is to try and figure out which one of those it is. Um, is it something you can do for its own sake, or is it something you need to do? So I'm going to look at the shapes of technology and starting off by thinking about technology itself changing um, to see if we can look for broad patterns that will help us to figure out the sorts of things we ought to, to be doing in, in learning and teaching. Um, all of our technologies allow us to do certain things. They afford, they make shapes, they create patterns in our world. And there is a sense in which that everything is a kind of technology from this perspective. So something like a tutor group is a kind of technology. It's a collection of things that we've artifacted up to create things, to, to make things happen. Um, so whilst we tend to focus on little things as technologies, devices, like a pencil, a pencil is a very good technology. It's very robust, it's very reliable, and you know what it does. You can throw it at things, you can make bridges out of it, but generally, the thing it's good at is helping you to write. So when you think about the rooms and the spaces we create, lecture theatres can be thought of as things that are very good at creating this sort of thing, um, like lectures. Right? So when you think of it about all of the collections of technologies you bring together, they make things happen. So if we can agree that things like the car have radically changed our world, I think we can also probably agree that things like the mobile phone have changed the way we look at our world, um, and certainly the computer has. So there's lots of things that, in the world that we live in, um, we want to change. The question is, what it is we should be changing, what it is we should be doing. So, the world's a big place, and I'm only going to be talking about a very small part of it. Um, in our technological world, which is the world primarily that has clean water, and the world that we live in at the minute, there are lots of new things that we, we can use to make the world a better place. Um, so, for example, cloud computing is now something we can distribute resources amongst very powerful computers and not even know where our things are anymore. Um, we can use tablets and mobile phones to do all sorts of things. And you'll hear some of the things that you can do with these devices in the other presentations. Um, I'm going to pick a few of the things that technology is changing for us and look a little bit further into the future, perhaps, about what, uh, what they can allow us to do. So first thing, I thought I would cheat by asking a provocative and uh, difficult question, and then I will answer a simple and not provocative question. So, provocative question, what do you really want to do with technology that you ought to try to do in 2015? And my answer is, if only we could change the nature of how we assess people. Because assessment is the one thing that we do and do very, very badly. So provocative question, interesting to think about. We tend to assess things as if we're grading eggs. And we do that in higher education. And we sit people in, in front of a piece of paper. We give them an equivalent of a pencil. And we hide the exam from them and then spring it on them and then expect them to perform at a level of competence. And then we grade them like they were eggs. And because we do that in higher education, we end up forcing everybody else underneath education to do it as well. So pr provocative and difficult question because you probably don't agree with that. I don't know if you do. So we're going to have a little panel session afterwards and we'll have a chance to find out. But I don't think I can do anything about that. I look at what technology allows us to do and I can't see how I can make the change we need to make. So interesting question, answer, I can't. So now, in order to fill the rest of my nine minutes, <laughs> I'm going to ask, actually, there are lots of people that can tell us what the future could look like with technology for things that we can do. There are lots of things we can do that will make the learner's life a better place, right? Um, so there are lots of educational futurists who will look into the future for us and say, these are the sorts of things we ought to be trying to change. We ought to try to change the social nature of interaction. We ought to try to change um, the way the spaces work for us. We ought to try to change the way people look at things. We ought to try to open up things. So I'm going to do a little bit of that and 
I'm not going to take an educational perspective to start with. How about we pretend we're all investors? You've got some money. What horse are you going to put it on? And that's what investors do. And for the investor perspective, I look at an um, analyst like Gartner. Gartner will say, put your money on a technology just before it's going to go up, and then take it off before it goes down, and put it on again just as it starts to deliver. So in Gartner's world, we see a nice picture of cool things that are going to be changing our world. Now, Gartner actually do do a picture on education, but I'm not going to look at that in particular. I'm looking at technology. Remember, we're going to start this, 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 this presentation with thinking about what technology ought to do. So obviously, you know, um, bioacoustic sensing or quantum computing, those are things you ought to be investing in. If you've got the pennies, stick them on there because they're just about to shoot up. Don't necessarily inv invest in cryptocurrencies right now because they're kind of on the way down and you should pick them up a bit later before they start to deliver. So you've got early ideas flowing through to things that de you develop in work and then through to things that actually deliver for you. So most of those things probably don't make much sense to you. And they don't make much sense to me either. So let's take away the things that don't really appear to have much to do with a future of learning. First off, let's take away the far-flung things like neurobusiness and bioacoustic sensing. It's kind of hard to see how it's going to fit into our world of learners. Then we'll take off the medium-term things like biochips and smart robots. Really cool, going to be interesting, not going to necessarily see them in your classroom context. Then let's take out the short-term things like speech recognition. Definitely, we're, really, we're good on speech recognition. It's going to be delivering. You're going to love it, but you're probably not going to love it in your learning context. Everything that's left in that picture is something not only you should invest in, because actually, at some point, it will deliver for you. But if you're smart, you'll deliver on the ones that are going up, right? And then you'll, you'll telematics, consumer telematics is definitely going to be working for you really soon, and so on, and so on. Now, these are the things we're working on. And let's have a look at some of them. Let's look at them in broad groups. If you're an innovator, you're probably most interested in the technologies that are the most ready. Um, because they're delivering real value to you, or the technology that can become the most ready in, in, uh, in a, sh a short period of time, three to five years. So this is NASA's technology readiness level, which is how we generally assess the uh, technologies that we look at. The ones that are one to three are, well, they're going to take quite a bit of time before they're mature. And the ones that are seven to eight, actually, they kind of should be in your system just now. They should be in your business, your university, your school, should be delivering against these sorts of things. You should definitely have activity streams um, flowing through to your learner's devices and sh telling you what it is they're doing. Okie dokie. Um, I'm going to just pick out a couple of those to show you some simple examples of how they might work. Um, this is a project that we're working on in blue collar learning. So these are learners in a workplace. They're in a helicopter factory, they're in a furniture factory, and they're in a fabrics factory. They're working in the context, and we're using technology to make their learning much more effective. All of those technologies are part of that world. There's a lot of data. They're wearing some things. They're quantifying the nature of their learning experience around themselves. There are streams of activities that the servers are picking up about what they're doing and measuring and changing. And we're also augment augmenting that experience. This chap, for example, is in a uh, German um, um, fabrics factory. He's about to set up a weaving machine. And he's wearing some Epson glasses. And they're powered by a little uh, Android phone that's in his pocket that's receiving instructions from the learning management system about what he should be working on and imposing those things in front of them. So very quickly, I'll show you how that sort of works. Um, it's a project called Tell Me. It's a very big, a lot of partners, complex scenario. So we're seeing a, a very quick, only going to give you about 40 seconds of this. So as you're looking around, the camera that's in the glasses that you're looking through is detecting what you're looking at. If what you're looking at is something the activity stream says you should be looking at, it gives you some instruction and some advice about it. It tells you how to set the various uh, parts of the machine, how to unscrew things to change the settings, what not to do in order to break pr the production line, what not to press in order to not kill yourself or have your hand chewed off, 
This guy's a pro, so he's working very fast, and that's good because it's a very quick video. And as you can see, elements of instruction, sometimes you're seeing him and sometimes you're seeing the instruction being imposed upon him. This is the sort of thing, anybody who's tried to use an iPhone to fix a washing machine when they're crawling around inside of it, because there's a really useful video on YouTube that helps you, which was my last weekend, by the way, will say, as soon as you've got this in front of you, it makes your life as a learner so much more powerful, so much more useful. And in some contexts, like the helicopter scenario that we use, it's critical. You can't leave the spanner in the helicopter engine or people will die. And if something is helping you to do that as you're working, then that's really, really cool. Now, this is a complex scenario. It's not quite cooked yet, so in, in terms of my curve, it's a little early in the curve. Now, let's look right down to the end of the curve to see how that technology can be working today for a user. And we have released today some new technologies from the Open University that let that augmented reality come into your home. So, this beautiful undergraduate prospectus hits the mat. It tells you what you can do if you're an Open University student. You pick up your iPad and download OU Alive from the Apple Store and start to look through at this and start to see things popping out at you. For example, if you're studying science at the Open University, you might want to know that beautiful thing called Rosetta that we flew past and landed something on a rock had these wonderful wings. You can unpack them, pick out feli, and splat it down on the page. Now, actually, inside that, there's some real complex learning. But this is just showing you some of the fun to start to think a bit about how you can make learning really start to unpack and come to life. Um, you can go home and you can do that, and by the way, over drinks, you can come and have a play if you, if you haven't got your own iPad. If you've got your own iPad, get a know you brochure, sign up as know you student, and um, learn how to do science. Okay, there's lots of stuff that needs to change in 2015, and there's lots of stuff that will change in 2015, and we can be part of that journey. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.